Hello everyone, welcome back to Unrest. Alright, so I need to go ask a couple wealthy people for donations to the temple. Let's go speak to them. I'm also apparently supposed to ask any well-off people on my way to them if they can also donate, but I think I've already done that. I could try again. Like, what about wealthy... these wealthy people? No, I don't think they... yeah, they just say something, but they don't actually give you something. And I've already spoken with all of the merchants, I think. And as it says here... Where, where is it? It says somewhere. Oh yeah, a wealthy merchant donated 16 coins and some food to the temple to keep G-Deep's men healthy and loyal. So I've already gotten some donations. Yeah, I don't think I can get anything more from them. Okay, so Mandeep is over here to the left. Oh wait, here's a new merchant. Don't bother asking me for any food or money. You think I'm rich just because I'm a merchant? You haven't had a meal in my household lately. We eat like peasants. Hmm. But, you do actually eat. That is more than those in the slums can say. So, they aren't my children, and feeding them is not my responsibility. Now leave me be. Eh, fair enough. Ah, about that time, I suppose. Come in. Can I offer you anything to eat or drink? I was just having... Oh god, how do I pronounce these? Kier? Pori? I'm gonna go with that. I was just having Kier and Pori as a snack. I have no idea what that is. I'm assuming that's some sort of a food. That's a pretty safe assumption, but other than that, I have no idea. Uh, no, thank you. I live mainly on temple food. You mean, on the food Ranvir can afford for all of you. I'll say this about him. He really does put as much of that money as possible towards the slums. And they say he lives on... Little but bread and water, you know. It's no more than you'd expect from a priest of his stature. Except there's never really been a priest of his stature, has there? One priest with half the city at his beck and call? The closest were the old royal priests, Kanika and the like, and they ate like kings, or so I heard. Of course, whether he spends his money on a hundred loaves of bread or one big supper, it's all the same to me. There's one more person I've got to pay to do business in this city. Might you not instead think of it as another way of saving lives, Doctor? I save lives because I'm paid to. Paying to save lives is more or less the opposite of my profession. Particularly to save the lives of people who, frankly, aren't doing me or anyone but Ranvir any good. No. At best, I look at this money as an investment. Wow, you are a shitty doctor. Well, I mean, maybe you're a good doctor in terms of in terms of actually doing doctory things, but you're a terrible person. Please pay Ranvir my respects. I wouldn't want him to think of me as anything less than a friend. Alright, have a nice day, douchebag. Also, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Whoops, I just- oh crap, I just clicked out of the game. There we go. And the sneeze went away. See if there's any new, any new news from the Mule Tenderizer. Hi. Remember what I said. Uh... <laughs> I just realized, I actually don't remember what he said. What did we talk about? He was talking about how it was... He's a foreigner to this place. It was strange how... Something... Something... What did he say? I don't even remember. I'm sorry. Dar. 
Dar, dar, dar. Where is dar? Are you dar? Doesn't say dar. It's supposed to be somewhere all the way to the right. Can I go down and then to the right? Ah, okay. I finally found it. These open doors in the background when you walk closer reveal a room. That could have been a little bit clearer. Um, and by a little bit, I mean quite a bit clearer. But anyway, here we go. The Naga opens the door and flinches when it sees you. Well, this is off to a good start. Oh, wait a minute. I was assuming that it actually hated me, but apparently... Apparently Dar does not hate me. Apparently Dar is actually afraid of me. Strange? Why? Um... Let's see. <laughs> I kind of want to say this, like, ah, oh my god! Gonna just scream at each other. Like, what the hell are you? You're a snake and I'm a human. We're both alien to each other. You're not Dar, are you? Come in. I've got everything ready for you. Uh, we doing a blood sacrifice? What's up? There it is. Enough for bread to feed and medicine to save ten human lives. And this is what you want, isn't it? Yes. This feels a bit strange. So something feels wrong. Why would you give this to us? You know we'll just use it to help our own people. Because I'm Ranvir's friend. He knows that, yes? I help him and his people. Is he hoping to protect himself from... Like, uh... Is he hoping to protect himself from when there might be a kind of a culling? When they maybe will take everyone to the streets and kill all the Naga? And perhaps Adar is hoping that by being Ranvir's friend of a sort? That they can avoid that? Hmm. I'm gonna question him. I'm gonna keep questioning him. Why would you be his friend? What does he do for you? The Naga might look uncomfortable, or might look upset. Hmm. I don't really want to take it. Let's be hesitant. I'm sorry about all of this. Sorry. You're sorry. When the day comes, sorry will not save me. Maybe money will. Wait, did I actually take it though? Oh, yeah, apparently, yeah. Well, it says offered. Did I actually. Hold on. Did I actually take it? I did. Well, I've got a lot of money. Suspiciously generous. Trying to stay alive by donating huge amounts of money. And medicine. Actually, did they don donate medicine? Or was it just money to buy medicine? I'm not sure. Either way, it's a lot of goods. Alright, time to head back, I suppose. Okay, what about Arjuni? Can I talk to you? No. So yeah, I do have a large sum of money, and I could spend quite a bit of it on protecting my family. 
well, I should use air quotes for that, protecting my family since, you know, if it comes to it, I have no idea if they're actually going to protect me. And if they don't, I mean, really, what am I going to do? Come up to some dude with a spear and say, give me my money. I want my money back. I want my, I want a refund. Here's my receipt. I mean, come on. I don't trust him. And the money is meant for the temple. No, nah, I'm not going to do it. Oh, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> I thought for a second I was not supposed to go back to him. Bhagwan, you're back in good time. Have you done what I asked? Yes, but there's something we need to talk about. I was hoping you would say that, Bhagwan. It's a vital step in the path of any priest to question his teachings. If you haven't confronted your beliefs, they aren't your beliefs. It's only a true saint, or a true fool, who has no doubts. What is it you'd like to talk about? What's your plan for the Naga? Where are you going with all this? You've heard my thoughts on the matter. Frankly, a Naga in the slums is as good as a death sentence for a dozen humans. We cannot suffer the violence and insatiable appetites of those creatures any longer. Coming to our city was an unfortunate move for everyone concerned. But when it comes down to it, it's them as should suffer the consequences. Is this bothering you? Well, of course it is. Just keep talking, though. I want to hear more of your bullshit. I'm not advocating open slaughter. We deport as many Naga as we can, at their own expense. Any that cannot be deported will be left to Jadeep's men to deal with. Isn't that fair? Jadeep's men, after all, come from those slums. It's their mouths the Nagas take bread out of. So it should be they who decide what to do. Oh my god, there's a misspell! <gasps> F-forts? I'm not sure what an F-forts is. Uh, anyway. Hmm. So once again, I can keep my head down. Or I can go against the grain. I do have children to think about, and keeping my head down would definitely be... Well, not definitely, but probably be better for them. But as a priest, I really, really, really don't think I can support this. It may be logical. But it doesn't sit right with me. I can't support it. You don't need to stay here if you aren't comfortable with what I've planned. I'll grant you, not everyone has the strength to do what will become necessary. But you don't have to leave this place either. I need believers. But if I cannot have them, I need hands to feed mouths. And you need a way to feed your children. Where will you go if you desert my temple? Who will take you in? Whoa, you can be very aggressive here. You'll meet your end soon enough, Ranvir. If anything, I will work to make it happen. Whoa. I wonder if he would just kill me right here. Would he do that? If I specifically say that I'm gonna help, try to take him, take him out? That is dangerous. That is really dangerous. That's playing with fire. And I'm not wearing any gloves, if you know what I mean. But then, yeah, how am I going to feed my children? I don't know. Um... God, what do I want to do? This is a really hard decision. Hmm.
I'll find a way. Goodbye, Bogwan. I'm sorry to say that you've disappointed me deeply. Well, it's a good thing I don't give a crap what you think about me. You fucking bigot. You have left the temple bitter and friendless, but with your principles intact. You don't know how your children will eat next, will eat next week, but at least you know where you stand. You've done your duty as a priest. Perhaps that's all you can do. Gained the trait. Principled. Alright, let's see what's next. Ah, here we go. Okay. Back with Asha. Avanash led Asha to a rundown hideout somewhere in the city. It soon became clear that Avanash wasn't just planning an insurgency. No, the insurgency was already in progress, and people from all parts of the city had flocked to its loyalist banner. He was evidently proud of what he'd created, but he still wouldn't explain to Asha what role she was to play in the coming days, nor would he answer many of her questions. Leader, those who hate the council will kill or die for Asha. Adaptable. I wonder if I'm going to be held up as like the... Well, the leader. I mean, I suppose I am, given that it's, a, my, it's my trait. Leader. I'm going to be the one they try to... They try to put into power, aren't I? Loyalist soldier. I can tell you're getting restless, but if you don't mind me saying so, princess, all of us are. We've been preparing the riots that would divert Shyam's men and let us strike the palace for many months. And now that the rightful queen of Bahimra is here, every day spent waiting is painful. Avanash and Kanika have laid out a grand operation for me. I'm indebted to them. Oh, most of the planning was done by others. But you're the central figure anyway. In fact, there's something for you to do right now. A matter's come up only you can handle. Three potential supporters of your revolution all came here to speak with Avanash. But we've informed them they'll be speaking with you instead. They are the nobleman Kalyan, the Naga trademaster Jalesh, and the and the grain merchant Ram uh, Ramanjeet? A bunch of grasping opportunists, if you ask me, but help is help. What should I know about them? Give me everything you know. Avanash briefed me, so I'll tell you what he told, what he told me. Firstly, Kalyan comes from one of the wealthiest families in Bahimra. Powerful, even now. He's been trying to get on the council for years, but Vijay hasn't gone near him. So Avanash got in touch, and here we are. Frankly, none of us trust him that much. We think he might try to seize power after the coup. Hmm. I don't think I want his support. But perhaps I can be crafty. Yes. So he thinks he can outsmart me. Maybe I can work with that. Jalesh is pragmatic. He came to Behemoth with a cart full of bribe money, and he's made every coin of it count. No one touches him, not even Ranvir. And he's become one of the most influential Naga in the city. But his reach ends at the slums. We're not sure what he's offering, but it's probably worth listening to. Sounds like a man of business. I'll be sure to treat him as one. Finally, Ramanjit. Not expecting much from him. He's a grain merchant, and his business has been doing about as well as you'd expect, given the length of this drought and the competition from the Naga Empire. He wouldn't talk much about what he's offering, 
wanted to speak to Avanash personally. He was surprised to hear he'd be talking to you instead. Don't worry, we've posted men on him to make sure he doesn't try anything stupid. We know these men won't rat us out to VJ. We're not letting them leave until our plans are put into action. And we're looking over all communications they send and receive from this building. All the same, take care. You can never be too cautious. Okay, is this where I'm supposed to go? Bookshelf. Oh my god, there's a lot of people here. We're in a derelict mansion. The hideout. How the council hasn't found the place is a minor mystery, but Avanash seems to take it for granted that the building is a completely safe place to plan the council's overthrow. The place is less one unified battle room and more a place where ideologically aligned and otherwise unsympathetic factions can rest, rearm, and uneasily coexist. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot what I was even going into the menu for. Active quests. Resistance. Not very helpful. Well, I assume I'm just supposed to speak to them, not go into like a special meeting room. And who are you? Mamta. Let's see. Are you in here? No, you're not. Oh, poor dear. I was afraid we'd find you in this state. Well, even fine jewelry needs a bit of cleaning up every now and then, doesn't it? And hot blood scrubs... And hot blood scrubs better than anything. Let me tell you that. What? Hot blood? What? What the fuck are you talking about? Hot blood scrubs better th What does that even mean? What do you- what? Hold on, hold on, is this like some password secret message? Hold on, I'm gonna write this down. Something's weird about this. She's either trying to give me a secret message, or she's off her rocker. Wait, does it, though? What? I mean, ever since those traitors killed the king and the queen of this great city, my family's starved to death, and my street's been taken over by the Naga. So if there's anything keeping you, the rightful queen of this city, from bringing my family back and driving those Naga out, well, I'll be happy to carve them open, let me tell you. I can't bring your family back. No one can. Yes, I suppose you're going to be very busy. Well, one thing at a time. One thing at a time. Alright, what's up with this bookshelf? The shelf is a tightly packed wall of books on numerous subjects. Avanash has clearly assembled quite a collection. A few titles stand out to you immediately. Hmm... I wonder if this will be used to help me understand the issues that require me to make decisions. Although I'm not sure how fishing in small creeks would help me. A survey of serpentine reproductive anatomy. Interesting. You take it from the shelf. Wait, can I just take it all? <laughs> okay, I'll take it all. Sweet. Wait. Where, where is it? Is it in my journal? History? Fishing in small creeks. Oh yeah, here it is. Okay, it's in history. Needless to say, this material is not only profoundly disturbing, but illustrative of what factors make the Naga so monstrous to behold. That is not helpful. Fishing in small creeks. There's a sublime beauty to earning one meal at a time that all men should experience. A 
thoughts and theories of chaos. And in the throes of uncertainty and turmoil, the enlightened man finds one comfort, that all this was inevitable. Herbs and medicine. Entire realms, such as those south and east of the Naga-controlled forests, must trade dearly for medicines that to our people are commonplace. I don't feel like any of that was really going to be helpful, but eh, who knows, maybe. Hi, historian. Oh, princess. Yes, please, if you will kindly indulge me. I'm going to need to ask you some questions soon. I'm getting your history together. Uh, of course, I'd be pleased to. Thank you. Ah, and princess, uh... Princes? Princes? I ain't no princes. I'm a princess. Ah, and Princess Asha. This is an honor and a pleasure. It truly is. Uh, okay, you're gonna ask me questions? Oh, looking forward to speaking once you've got a moment, Princess. Okay. There's Kanika. I forgot exactly who she is again. I should probably look that up. Your parents' former advisor, a former priestess, now the leader of a rebellious faction of violent slum dwellers. Her conviction is inescapable. Okay. Shirada. I'm Shirada. I make my living by trading volumes between Bohemia and the cities out as far as Taxila. And this is not what you're interested in talking about, is it? I'm sorry, it's been so long since I've had a conversation with a person of high birth that wasn't insufferably boring. Well, it's good to make your acquaintance. I'm certainly glad to meet you. I've been putting all of my wealth into this little endeavor of Avanashes. It's good to know what I've... what I've... what I have spending it on? What? It's good to know what I've been spending it on. So why have you supported him? I don't know. Why don't you guess? Hold on, are you in my list? Nope. Probably for the thrill of it, right? Let's face it. Being part of an uprising is fun. Chaos and change are always more interesting than the status quo. Even when the status quo is all that's keeping things together. Who was I going to support? VJ, who was unlikable but safe? Or the sweet young underdog princess? Now that's a chapter of history I want to be part of. Good luck, by the way. Did you just call me an underdog? Did you just compare your princess to a dog? I ain't no underdog or upper dog. Off with your head. Nah, Alright, you can stay, you're fine. Loyalist soldier. That's a soldier? Looks more like someone who doesn't even have decent pants. Which I suppose aren't mutually exclusive. You could wear shitty pants and be a soldier. But it just looks like some... Dude holding a stick, like, just a stick, not even a sharpened stick, just a st stick. <laughs> so you're the princess, no offense, but I'm not convinced you'll ever make it back into power. Well. I love you too. Asha, I can't tell, I can't tell you what it's like to see you again. It's like I found a piece of the old days, before VJ destroyed everything and drove Behemra into the dirt. None of us can wait to take him from the throne. You really think I'll be able to make things better? You are the true queen of Behemra. You couldn't help but, but save the city. From where I sit, 
If all you did upon recovering the throne was destroy Ranvir and his minions, that would have been a reign well executed. Ranvir and the others will answer for what they've done, but I'm going to do this as cleanly as possible. Don't be too lenient. Soon you'll have the whole council at your fingertips, and that will not be the time to be clean. It will be a time to set examples. Mercy is a fine thing in peacetime, but in war, it nurtures the evil in people's hearts. Dealing decisively with those who militarize the slums and break the backs of their farmers will be the nobler goal. To fix Behemra, you will need to destroy those responsible for its downfall. That these are the ones who murdered your parents or condoned their betrayal makes justice that much sweeter. Evanash. I just face through the door. I am a princess. I have this ability. I think it's one of my traits. Adaptable. See? I can adapt to face through walls. And doors. But not the floor, because that would be inconvenient. There's no turning back now, Asha. We have a number of petitioners from all over the city, eager to see what you're capable of. Would you see to them and their needs, or press onward? Oh Jesus, let's not go yet, I'll speak to them first. That would be insane to go out without even trying to get their support? Jesus. Alright, well, let's speak to one of them. Kalyon. You are... Wait, which one of the people I was supposed to speak to? I think so. Hold on, it said somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, an untrustworthy nobleman named Kalyon. Okay. Princess, I never gave up hope that you were out there somewhere. It's the grandest honor of my life to meet you, and it will be the grandest honor still to serve you. Why don't you skip straight to what you want from me? I, I was going to offer you 20 of my men. They're able fighters and will serve your every wish. And what do you want in return? Nothing at all. I chafe under Vijay's rule and long to see re you restored to the throne. Hmm. So nonchalant just take them on? No. I can say any of them that show signs of treachery will be killed. Okay. But that doesn't prevent them from being treacherous just because I'll kill them if they show signs of treachery. Because he was, someone was saying that they're worried that this person might try to take power afterwards. And those 20 men might be able to help him. No, I'm, I'm not going to take them. He sputters, fumes, then, after studying your face for a moment, falls silent. There's nothing more for him to say. Okay, were you one of the people I had to talk to? Yes, a poor trader. Oh, right, you're the, uh, the grain farmer, I think? Princess, it really is you. I can't believe it. I am your humblest of subjects. You have my everlasting gratitude for deigning to speak with me. I'm happy to help however I can. What's the matter? 
princess. I know how terrible things are in the slums. That's why I do everything I can to help them. I supply several local traders with foodstuffs and essential goods in exchange for whatever they have to barter with. I'm not proud to trade beyond my caste, but I perform a necessary service, and I'm rewarded for it. Well, you've probably kept a lot of people alive doing that. I won't lie. I want to be a regular merchant again. My contacts have been pressuring me as of late, and I think I'd prefer some more genteel trading partners. What I want is a guarantee that I'll have work once you're in power. And in exchange? In exchange, I'm also responsible for delivering meals to Jadeep's men on occasion. I happen to know you're going to use riots to draw out Shyam's boys. Well, they're just waiting for riots to happen so they can steer him against the Naga. I deliver food to him every day. It'd be an easy matter to slip something into his men's food at the right moment. You're not going to get another chance like this. You have to know that. You have to. That actually sounds brilliant. Yes, yeah, so they're going to try to steer the riots against the Naga. That makes sense. I think they will. Yeah, that actually sounds like a good idea. I think we have a deal. You won't regret this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Alright, you are the traitor, the prolific traitor. It's always a good sign when I'm referred directly to the person in charge. It's good to make your acquaintance, Queen Asha. And to make yours. I never know how much small talk is called for. I suppose I'll risk being blunt. I'm connected to City... I'm connected to City Naga? What? I, I'm connect... I don't, under, I don't understand that sentence. And all the way up to Counselor Raya. If I believe your administration will genuinely support my people, I will ensure they are all... They are well disposed to you and your rule. I definitely do want to look out for the Naga, actually. But I'm going to need more than disposition. I need support. There's not much support I can offer you before you're in power. We are understandably skittish about getting on the Council's bad side. Ranvir's in particular. I admire your willingness to push for all you can get. But this is simply a bridge we cannot cross. Then there's no point in making a deal now. We'll deal later, when I'm in power. Fair enough. We will speak again. Okay, I think that's all I needed to do. Uh, what did I get? Calculating. Asha evens the odds however she may. Indeed. Okay, Jilesh and I didn't end up coming to an accord. Assuming I survive any of this, I have a feeling I haven't seen the last of him. I think that's all, I, all the people I needed to speak to, but let's see what everyone else is up to. Welcome back to Decent Company. With any luck, you'll never have to set foot in those slum streets again. <laughs> We're in the slums right now. Are you planning to carry me out so my feet don't touch the streets? You know what I meant. This has been a long nightmare. Uh, night nightmare. It's been a long nightmare. <laughs> this has been a long nightmare for all of us, you know. I would have given anything not to put my wife through this. I'm missing something. 
There was a riot on our lands. Fifteen peasants and two of our guards, dead in an hour. We'd barely put up the funeral pyres before Vijay's men rode up and told us they were giving our land to some up-jumped widow. Like she could do a better job than we could. We've been living with relatives in the city ever since. I'm sorry to hear that. The point is that I didn't deserve this. Neither did Kanika, and neither did you. The slums think, just because we're at the top, everything that goes wrong in their lives is our responsibility. And Vijay, the vicious fool, has seized power on that lie. I say it's time we got what's ours back. Madu. I still don't know exactly how it is we're supposed to help. We've been helping the historian with his notes, and we've been bringing over what jewelry and money we've been able to save. But, well... I wish we could just wait with our relatives until you've taken power, and it's our turn to help. I don't feel very safe here. Hmm. Well, you might as well try to get to safety if you can. If you've got somewhere else to stay, I'd go there. Things will get worse before they get better. Yes, I'll try to talk to my husband into it. I'll try to talk my husband into it, rather. He says he doesn't know what Avanash wants from him yet, and he won't leave until he does. But what could Avanash possibly expect of us? He doesn't expect us to take up arms and fight for you, surely. So, then what? I don't know. Captain! Kanika says you're the real thing. All along I was wondering why it was taking so long for Avanash to find an urchin who looked right. And it turns out, the crazy bastard had been looking for the actual princess. Sounds like you don't agree. Damn waste of time if you ask me. You've been rooting in filth for years now. Not like there's much difference between you and any other gutter rat. Well. Maybe there isn't that much of a difference. But so what? Well, Avidash seems to think... Seems to think you sweet fine wine. He wants to drink a cup of it. That's fine with me. I think he'll be as welcome on this city's throne as a dog dropping. <laughs> okay. And what would you know about that? I was born filthy. I'm from these stinking slums, you understand that? I was born here back when it was two poxy alleys and no naga in sight. And back then, when we didn't have nothing to eat and our skin was breaking out in boils, at least we knew there was a princess out there somewhere who was above all this. Now, you're down here with the rest of us. And the last thing about this city that was pure is dead. Forever. You're filth. Make you queen, and you'll beget kings of mud. That, uh, that was a strangely poetic bit of... bit of crap there. I mean, still, he's a hateful little man, but it, is, it was actually kind of poetic. Who are you people? Keep back, little girl. These mixtures are dangerous. Hmm. Okay. Alright, I think I've spoken with everyone. I talked to Kanika, right? Yeah. Okay. Time to go. Yes, I am. Very well. Asha, it's nearly time. Our people in the slums are ready to spark chaos at a moment's notice. As soon as our spies report Shyam's men have cleared from their garrison, garrisons in the palace courtyard and mobilized to respond, then will strike the palace directly. Then everything will fall to you. VJ's entire ruling council should be there. Good. I'm glad you're eager. Hatred is an ugly thing. 
but you've earned it, and you'll need it. Your parents can't have died for nothing, and their legacy cannot die with them. Hatred isn't what drives me. It's a chance to save Behemra's fortunes. I won't lie to you, Asha. The unrest will spread beyond what we can shut down or control. There will be chaos tonight, and all that chaos... But all that chaos is in service of a greater purpose. Tonight cannot end with the usurper Vijay in power, and the true ruler, Asha, wasting away in the slums. For a year, Shyam has used his vast military force to act as guards for the wealthy and safe, and jailers for the downtrodden. Now, we'll turn his cowardice and greed against him, and then, your parents and the slums will have their revenge. Preparations are carried out with silent intensity. Soldiers gather their weapons, slum dwellers lay out bandages for the wounded, nobles summon final deliveries of weapons and equipment. Shyam's men will be drawn as far as possible from the palace. Then, the resistance will begin in earnest. Whoa, I'm playing as Shyam, okay. You are Shyam, a mercenary captain and counselor. 40 years old. After the royals were assassinated, both your business and responsibilities increased significantly. Of course, you knew this would happen when you aided Vijay in their demise, just like you knew that the slums would erupt in violence sooner or later. Today's the day you've been readying yourself for since you joined the council. Your company is holding the line between the slums and the rest of Behemra. While they await further orders, Vijay has called a special meeting of the council to discuss what should be done about the riots. If anything. A combat veteran, a city councillor, and a company leader. Okay, well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. So everything is coming to a head. Everything is coming to a head in Bohemra. There's about to be, most likely, a large shift in power. So what's going to happen? Is Asha going to be put into power? Or is everything going to go wrong? Are the Naga going to be driven out? Are the riots going to be turned against the Naga? You know, we've... This is basically a powder keg. And it's exploding. It's in the process of exploding, but we don't know exactly what's going to be left after it does. It should be very interesting to see what happens. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.